In the previous video, we created our own cluster, created our own database and got the URL and tried connecting from MongoDB campus. But this time we want to actually do it from our own application and connect from here. So it's going to be a bit different than the Merge tank because in the Merge tank we used to create you know, our server and then when we run our server, we connect to the database right away. But in next case, it's going to be a bit different. We want, whenever we want something from the database, like for example, a center request to the server, so the server is going to do something with the database. Then we connect to the database, do something like updating, getting our own data from the database, then disconnecting. So it's going to be like a, this flow. We connect to the database, get what we need, and then disconnect. So we can have like a folder where we're going to have this, uh, you know, these few helpers, you can call them. So you can call this folder either helpers or utils, okay? These are the base, you know, common names they use for this type of uh, folders. So let's call this db.js. And first of all, we need to install two packages that are going to help us, which is that going to help us, which is going to be MongoDB and also Mongo. So yarn add or npm install MongoDB, MongoDB and also Mongoose, both of them. And we need to these installs. Let me close that and work right here. Let me zoom in a bit. So import mongoose from mongoose okay and we're gonna create our own connection object which is gonna be empty if we get connected to something we're gonna store the information in this object so we can create our own function let's call it export and then async function and async function because we need to wait for some operations to happen that's why we use the asynchronous function so and then we can call this like connect okay db and then right here, first of all, we want to check. So if we had any connection, we're going to store it right here. So simply we can check there. So if connection dot is connected, which is something that we're going to add later when we connect. And then simply, if it does exist, then we are already connecting. But in the first time that we're going to do, connection is going to be empty. So this is not going to be, you know, something that happens. So I'm just going to console log like already connected to the database. Okay, which is not data base, which is not going to happen the first time. So this is only going to happen the second time when you try to connect after connecting. So if this is happening, also on a return, we don't want to run anything more. Okay, now we're going to come to the second scenario. So we're going to go F and then we're going to go to Mongoose and then we're going to go to connections, to the list of connections we have. And then we're going to go to the length of it and then see if it's more than zero. That means there is some sort of connection from mongoose that we imported from here so simply then we're going to go to our object connection and then simply i'm going to add this property which is connected and then it's going to equal mongoose connections the first element from the array and then read this state which is if it's connected it's going to be one so this is we get it sorry so for the typos let me make sure connection okay the object that we have right here and we're going to add the property is connected and it's going to be mongoose.connection really state, which is if it's, you know, connected, it's going to be one. So we're going to check for that. So if connection, you don't to actually have to understand this fully. This is just the way how we connect. So it's connected. And then we're going to see if it's equal, equal one, then it's already connected. So we can use our previous connection that we have. So simply console log use you've probably seen this this is like the most common way to connect to the database in next year so use previous connection to the database like that okay and then also return and we need to disconnect from here so await because it's an asynchronous function so it's operates waiting so await and then we're gonna go to mongoose and then disconnect and right here simply we gonna connect after all of this <laughs> So we can create an object, let's call it db, and let me just see, so we're going to go to await, and then mongoose.connect, and simply we need to add the URL that we need to connect with, which is going to be in the env file that we added right here, so this link. So to access that, easy way, so you just got to go process.env.the name that you have in the, let me just show you, in the env, which is going to be this one. Then go back right here and add it there. And in the second parameter, it's going to be the parameters or the options you want. So we're going to use the new, use new URL parser. And it's going to be true. So we can connect with the new way with the URL when it comes to MongoDB. And also we want to add use unified topology. Unified 
topoid topology which is gonna be true so use unified topology so we may have some typos but we're gonna see so console log new connection to the database so this is what happens when we connect the first time database okay and then we just simply gonna make sure that it's connected so we're gonna add it to the connection object so i'm gonna go right here and then is connected you don't have to remember this i don't even remember it myself so you can just have it always with you so whenever you need any project you need to connect to the database you have this file so i'm gonna go db and then i'm gonna go to connections which is gonna be the first one and then i'm gonna get the ready state which is gonna be connected so when we connect right here so the state in the connection is gonna be one then we go back right here if it's already exists so we're gonna see that it's one we're just simply gonna use the previous connection because we are all not disconnected so this is how it work i think i'm zoomed in too much so i just want to make sure that everything is clear so this is like the function that's used to connect so if i take this function connect db and for example i went to the pages and epi and hello right here i can import that from and i'm gonna go up to utils and then db and i'm gonna i can try and run and try and run this function in this route so simply if you remember i told you about routes epi so you go to our url which is localhost 3000 then forward slash epi then forward slash hello and everything right here is gonna run in that route route which is gonna be simply returning name john doe but also it's gonna connect so it's gonna console log one of the options that we have right here or depending on what we have so simply if i open the console right here when it's running and then go back right here and then go to forward slash epi then hello hello i don't have it so and then enter you're going to see it returns the name John Doe, but if we go back right here, okay, so we have some problems. Okay, let me just see. Okay, in handle rejection, okay, use unified. There is something, some typos is going to be use unified topology. So let me try that again. Okay. So we get that and we go back right here. Let me see. And as you see right here, new connection to the database. That means our first connection. But let me try and refresh again. So if we try and refresh again, we already connected. So it should be showing us already connected to the database. So let me just show you. Let me just go back. Yeah, I refresh that. Go back and you see right here already connected to the database and you don't need to uh, you know perform another connection to the database. So that's the first way to connect to the database. Now let's actually work. So this connecting is actually pretty simple. Let's create our function. So export and then async function. Let's call it disconnect db. And it just simply, this is how it's going to work. When we are in development mode, which is what we are right now, we don't want to disconnect every time. So as long as we're connected to the database, we don't need to disconnect because that's going to be just too much. Imagine you're sending a lot of requests you know, while testing, so it's gonna occupy your processor a lot and just not gonna be a good way on a good environment for you to develop in. So we only, when we are in the production mode, which is the, the version that is like available for everyone and hosted and all of that, then in that scenario, yes, we need to disconnect. We don't want to like keep connecting to the database at all. That's going to create a lot of traffic. But when we are in development mode, we don't need to connect and disconnect. That's the whole idea of it. So first of all, we want to go actually to connection and see if we are this if, if we are connected. So it's connected. So when we are connected, also there's two scenarios. So we're going to go first of all to process this EMV dot not emv okay variable and then we're gonna see if it's equal to production that means we are in production mode then we need to actually disconnect so we can go await and then mongoose and then disconnect like that and then also want to go to our connection and then is connected and make it either empty or false whatever you want and then else that means we are connected as you see i see we already connected but we are in the development mode so we don't need to actually do anything you can just leave it like that or just like console log not disconnecting i prefer to not add anything or we can actually add it just so we can test it not disconnecting from the database like that so we can actually just go back to hello and after connecting we can actually also get disconnect 
and then after that we can just try it like that so let me go back and open the console and then go back here so let me refresh and then go back so as you see use previous connection because we already connected and then not this connection from the database because we are in development mode so you can do it this way or you can also like remove this export from here and just simply create an object that's called db that's going to contain both because we're going to add few extra later we want to you know just stringify things so you're gonna see so i'm not just gonna talk about it right now so disconnect and this is gonna be our db and then export by default okay db so we can export it directly for me so if i go back to hello i can export the db directly as default and then right here i can go db dot the element or the function that i want also right here and if you go back also here and try that again refresh this go back and it's there is something okay so db dot connect db so let me just see what name I had for it so we had connect db and then also disconnect db and export why we have this problem export default db go back right here okay sorry yeah I think it's all right what is the problem so db disconnect let me just try this again okay it works there yeah yeah it works so everything is fine use previous connection and also not disconnecting from the database we're gonna add our own you know other functions right here. it's gonna be like many others but as you see right here now we are be gonna be able to connect and disconnect i know 